Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we're seeing a bunch of mini PCs flood the market and I got in this one the other day that actually surprised me in a good way. This one is called the Ace Magician AM06 Pro. It is based on a Ryzen architecture here and it performs pretty well and it's got some neat features and we're going to dive into this in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Ace Magician who manufactured the device. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at around $419, but there is a coupon on Amazon right now that brings the price down to $329. Now inside this has a Ryzen processor, a 5800U. We see this on a lot of laptops that we've looked at here on the channel. You also get 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage on an NVMe. A little bit earlier, I took it apart. It's not hard to do. You just unscrew the screws at the bottom. And as you can see there, it's got the 16 gigs of RAM on two sticks, eight gigs each. So you get the dual channel memory, but it does have one of these generic uh, NVMe SSDs on there, as you can see. But all in so far, it's been performing just fine. What you can also do is add a SATA drive to the mix with a cable that you'll find in the box. Also in the box, you'll find a Visa mount adapter so you can mount it onto the back of a display if you wanted to. Now the build quality on this is not spectacular. It is all just plastic, but you do get a lot of useful ports here. So on the front, you've got an audio jack, two USB 3 ports, and a USB Type-C. This USB-C port will do data devices along with video output. Here you've got a microphone, so you could actually get your voice picked up just from the front of the unit here. Nothing on this side, but then on the back, you get another USB-C port, which they say is just for power, but this is actually a fully functional port. So when I plug this into my docking station, I was able to power the unit here and get video output from this port along with the one in the front. Additionally, there are two more display outputs, an HDMI and a display port here. So in my testing, I was able to get four simultaneous 4K displays to output, and they were running at 60 hertz each. Now the machine did get a little sluggish when I had all four 4K displays going at the same time, but I think you could probably mix and match here. So maybe having four 1080p displays or maybe a couple of 4Ks and a couple of 1080ps. But either way, all of the USB-C ports here can output video along with the two display outputs on it as well. And each of those displays was independent from the other. So there was no mirroring going on either. So that was a nice surprise to see on here. You also have dual LAN. One of these LAN ports is 2.5 gigabits, the other is one gigabit. And the controller on the 2.5 is an Intel L226 and the other one is a Realtek. So you could use this perhaps as a little router if you wanted to, maybe even more than a little bit of a router given the uh, performance you can get out of one of those ethernet ports. And of course you could add more by adding USB ethernet adapters. A little bit earlier, I ran a speed test on the 2.5 gigabit ethernet and it was performing pretty close to where I would expect it to perform connecting up to my multi gigabit network here. So I think for router use, if you have a multi gig internet connection, this should work out pretty well. So you can see the downstream there and here is the upstream. You also have two USB 2.0 ports here on the back. These are slower than the ones on the front. So I would plug your keyboard and mouse into these and have the front ports work for your higher speed devices like hard drives. Additionally, you get a Kensington lock slot here as well, so nobody walks off with your Ace Magician PC. And it also has a Wi-Fi 6E radio on board that can operate with up to 80 megahertz of bandwidth. That is the RZ608, which is an AMD Realtek collaboration there. So all in, I think from the amount of connectivity you have on this thing, it's a pretty good bargain. And as you'll see in a few minutes, the performance isn't bad either. So let's boot it up and see how it performs. So let's start off with some of the basics here. We'll load up Microsoft Word and just see how this thing functions as a general computing device. As you can see, things pop up here very quickly, uh, due in part to the processor and the RAM we've got on board. And it seems like it's working pretty good for doing basic word processing. We are running at 4K60 here, so it's able to keep up pretty well with everything I'm doing without feeling sluggish. 
And as you can see here, the NASA.gov website here is loading up very quickly. The YouTube video there just sprung up very fast as well. I am on my two and a half gigabit uh, internet connection here, so that's contributing, of course. But overall, it's able to keep up with everything that I'm doing here pretty nicely. A little bit earlier, we did load up YouTube and played back a 4K60 video from my YouTube channel. I did see a couple of dropped frames, not many as it was playing back. It wasn't noticeable, but the uh, Stats for Nerds there did pick up two dropped frames uh, once everything settled down. But I think by and large for media consumption, it's going to work fine. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 293. And that puts this thing right in line with what we've seen on other machines powered by recent Intel and Ryzen processors. Now, I am no longer recommending Windows mini PCs as home theater computers, primarily because of all the difficulties getting HDR video, especially Dolby Vision, to work out of these things. Another thing I would caution you on is having this run as a Plex server. Now, in some testing of some other mini PCs with similar Ryzen processors, I was able to get hardware transcoding to work, but it's not supported on AMD processors like it is on the Intel variants. So if you were looking for a mini PC to run as a Plex server, I would look at something maybe running with an Intel N95 or N100 processor, which will do a much better job of hardware transcoding and will be officially supported by Plex. Let's take a look now at a few other things. And a little bit earlier, I loaded up DaVinci Resolve and tried out some 4K 60 frames per second video editing on here. And as you can see, we were able to get that cross-dissolve to render pretty much in real time with the onboard graphics. It didn't seem to struggle all that much with some basic video editing tasks. So I think the kinds of work that I do here on the YouTube channel would actually work out okay, I think, on this little mini PC but more involved kinds of projects where you're doing a lot of color correction and special effects will obviously need a more powerful computer. So let's take a look at some games now. I've got No Man's Sky running here at the lowest settings at 1080p. This was pushing the machine a little bit. I was only getting about 25 frames per second most of the time as I was exploring the region around my base. I was doing a little bit better when I had my spaceship up in orbit, uh, but by and large, I think this game would do better at 720p. I also loaded up Red Dead Redemption 2, and this one I ran at the absolute lowest settings at that lower 720p resolution, and this was doing really well. I was getting about 45 to 50 frames per second out of it. Very, very playable. So I think you could probably get a good amount of games played on this machine if you turn the resolution down to 720p, and at that resolution you'll probably be between 40 and 60 frames per second depending on the game that you're playing on it. But this ran much better than expected. So I think the performance here is good. I do think getting an Xbox Series S at this point is probably the better buy if you are looking to primarily play games on it. But as a secondary kind of activity, games run quite nicely on here thanks to the Ryzen processor on board. And as expected, it did very well with emulation. Certainly all of the 8 and 16-bit stuff will run on this without any issues. I also booted up the Dolphin emulator, which you're watching here and it was able to run some of my favorite games at full speed with no lag or slowdown. So overall, a pretty good gaming experience here, especially if you are looking for something small and relatively inexpensive. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,442. Graphically, it's a little behind what you would get out of a Steam Deck, but as many PCs go, this one is doing just fine. You can see it's very comparable to the 4800U-based Ryzen processor in the B-Link SER4 we looked at last year. We also ran the 3D Mark stress test, and there I got a passing grade of 98%. That tells me that the machine will remain relatively stable in its performance, even when you're playing a game or taxing the processor over an extended period of time. The fan noise isn't all that bad on this either. Oddly, when I was running that stress test, it wasn't all that loud. It was only when the test concluded and the results were coming up that the fan picked up its pace a bit. So generally, it'll be a very uh, low-level noise when it's running, uh, doing a more strenuous task, and then occasionally you'll hear it spike. But when it does spike, you will hear that fan going, and you'll also kind of hear the air flowing through it as well. It's not quite a whistle. It's more of a wind tunnel -y effect, if that makes sense. I did try to capture the sound with my microphone, but I was not successful in doing so. But just be aware of that. When that fan is going full blast, you are going to hear it a bit. 
but it doesn't happen all that often. And I was surprised, again, when it was under load that it wasn't noisier. One of the things that I've noticed with many of these mini PCs is that they're often ramping their fan up and down constantly, which can be pretty distracting. This one doesn't seem to do it, so I think it's got a pretty decent thermal system on there. All right, one last thing to check out, and that is its Linux performance. I booted up the most recent version of Ubuntu on here, and it's running very nicely. So we've got the display here at 4K60. It was able to detect that just fine. We got both Ethernet ports and the Wi-Fi detected. Bluetooth is working on it as well. So it looks as though everything is going to work just as well on the Linux side as it will on the Windows side. So all in, I think you're going to have a very nice Linux experience here if you did want to play around with a few different distributions. I haven't tried this yet, but I would imagine it would work well with Steam OS too if you wanted to try that out from a gaming perspective. So I think if you're looking to run Windows or Linux, uh, this machine is going to do it for you there. I should note on the Windows side of things, it comes bundled with Windows 11 Pro. It was properly activated, nothing looked fishy, uh, at least in my testing with it. So all in, it looks like this is a legit, uh, decent little mini PC, one of the more interesting ones that I have looked at in a while. And I think if you are in the market for something like this, the price at this point, I think is pretty reasonable for what you're getting here, especially from a performance and feature standpoint. One thing though to keep in mind is that this is not a known brand to me. And I often recommend that people buy these at their own risk because although it's working great now, if something were to happen in the future, you may not be able to get support for it. So just be prepared for that eventuality, keep good backups, and also just know that you get what you pay for when you buy a cheap little mini PC but this one seems to be a little better than some of the other ones I have looked at recently. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.